You'll be fine. All right. Good morning and welcome to Saturday Somethings um, with Cyan. And super excited, honestly, can't stop laughing. <laughs> to have my friend DJ with us this week, uh, we are featuring on Penfolds America. So most people are familiar with Penfolds, Penfolds Grange, been a pretty iconic wine from Australia. Um, this has been a project that I hadn't heard a word of until like, a couple of months ago when DJ was sitting in the office and I could hear this English accent like in the back talking <laughs> about these wines. And we tasted them a couple of weeks ago. Go. We brought some in, and I can't wait to taste them again. Like these are wines that we've caravaned, so that obviously tells me how rare they are and how expensive they are, because it means I don't just get to drink them free flowing. Um, DJ is an account specialist with Treasury, uh, working with Breakthrough locally, and is our um, specialist in a lot of these like, really beautiful wines. As we mentioned, she's from England. I'm from Scotland. We we're talking about how people. When we get excited, I do the same thing. I talk really fast and nobody understands a word that I say. And even just like five minutes with her, my Scottish accent is coming out again. So <laughs> apologies in advance. Um, but, you know, we're excited. They're great wines. Yeah. Um, so glad to have you with us. Um, you. How long have you been in the States now? Uh, 25 years. Excellent. Still got the long accent. Long time, yeah. 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 Don't uh, think it's going anywhere. Yeah. Where are you from <laughs> in England? I was born in East London, raised in North London. Yeah. Yeah. So I have an opportunity to practice my terrible English accent. <laughs> All right, governor. <laughs> I am what they call an official Cockney. I was born in the heart of the East End where the Bow, the bow Bells. If, so, you, if yeah. you're born in the uh, sound of the Bow Bells, the church, um, uh, you are uh, officially yeah, a Cockney. Cockney. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Very good. So East Enders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, tell us about... Um, I'm going all English. <laughs> um, tell us about the Penfolds America project and kind of how it came to be, whose idea it was, what was the yeah. focus or the reason for it. So Penfolds has been in business for over 175 years, a long time, and they've had four winemakers in that time. Um, so that obviously winemakers stick around for a long time. Um, Peter Gago is the current winemaker, and he had this idea to bring Penfolds to California in the late 80s. Okay. So this has been a long a long project um, in, in the works and <clears throat> he jokes when he talks about the story as um, when he would send winemakers to California to start the project off they actually would not come back mm. so he kept losing winemakers um, he actually um, had a winemaker that started working for him in 2010 Steph Dutton who's amazing and she started the project really in California along with Andrew Baldwin, who's their red winemaker. Okay. Um, um, they started with, uh, they bought a ranch called the Preston Ranch, in, uh, formerly Kalamata Hills in Paso Robles. Okay. And so the first wine we're gonna taste is the Bin 600. And it was named after 600 Creston Ranch was the address that they purchased and where they actually planted the original vines. Um, the idea behind it was to bring Australian vines to the US um, and have an Australian um, background with the wines, uh, the DNA, but then coming from soil type and terroir in California, um, they source from some of the key areas from Oakville to Rutherford um, to Diamond Mountain, um, to further up north, just some really key spots um, to get their, their fruit from. Cool. So, <clears throat> um, so on this one, this is mostly Paso Robles fruit? Or? So 22% of the fruit is Paso Robles, the okay. Shiraz. Um, and I like to think about Australian Shiraz as being a bit more masculine. Um, the Californian Shiraz, Syrah, tends to be a bit more of a lighter weight, more of a blending varietal. But the Australian Shiraz tends to be much more masculine and fuller bodied. And so paired with the 78% of cab that goes into it, um, I think it's a really great, um, luscious, juicy wine. Um, the 600 sees American wood for 16 months okay. and 40% of that wood is new so you're going to get much more of a just an easy drinking um, but full bodied you know as well a great wine for casual fare for any kind of pasta bolognese anything like that even some steak on the grill I think it would go really well mm. with. I like with this um, tasting notes for Australian Shiraz when it first hit the market it would always be like chocolate mint and I kind of get a little bit of that on this, but I'm wondering if part of that is also to do with the um, the oak in there. So mm -hmm. the American oak kind of has that coconutty element as yeah, well. So it kind of sure. really feels a little bit candied. Yeah. Kind of cool. Yes. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, so Paso Robles, why did they choose that region in general? I think when they did the research, it seemed to be an area that would do the best for the Shiraz they were bringing over from Australia. Okay. Um, so it's the only area they use, um, the only wine they used um, 
wine from Paso Robles is in the 600 okay. of the four wines. And I think that you'll see um, as you go through these wines, that every wine is stylistically very different mm -hmm. and that's, that's intentional. Okay. But the winery is in Paso Robles? The winery is more in, in Napa. Okay. Um, right, yeah. But they bought the ranch in Paso Robles where they sourced the fruit from. Cool. Yeah. I think that Paso Robles is a pretty exciting region right now in California. Um, Napa and Sonoma, for the most part, is pretty saturated in terms of what is available to purchase and what you can buy. Um, so a lot of really talented winemakers who are passionate about making wine can't afford to buy their own winery and do that. So right. they're finding which regions, which soils, which grapes are actually doing really well in um, Paso Robles. So yeah, for sure. it's worth checking out. But I think it's nice to see something recognizable like this label yeah. in there. But it's weird like seeing it in the... California Isle, I'm like, somebody put this bottle on the wrong shelf. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, remind well, yourself. Actually, I've been selling Penfolds for um, a couple of decades between my life here and then my life in, in um, Ohio when I, when I worked and lived there. Um, and so when I first heard Penfolds was making a Californian project, I was very skeptical um, because I think about um, Penfolds as being iconic Australian. And I think going somewhere else is just like, why spoil it? But when I tasted the wines and when I heard the story and when I ta I've taken these wines out with people in the marketplace, it's been so well received and the quality is definitely in the bottle right. that now I get it. Now I understand why they're doing it for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, so the 600, California, 25% Shiraz, 75 Cab. Yeah, 22, 78, okay. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And then the next one, so 704 so this, is... Yeah, the 704 is um, all cab. Okay. Um, and it's, again, from the major regions I talked about going up the valleys, so Oakville, Rutherford, uh, Diamond Mountain, um, Spring Mountain. What I find interesting here is that they actually planted the vines in those soil types from Australia. So it's Australian vines in Californian soil types. And you get some of that eucalyptus um, sometimes on the nose that you get from Australian wines. Yeah. Um, but then you get more of the Rutherford dust on the finish with the, with the red tannins at the end. For sure. You know, so it's, it's very interesting, very unique, and yeah. nothing really like it out there. I don't think so. I really enjoy this one. Like I said, I typically prefer lower alcohol wines. And I like kind of tasting the earth on the wine. So any kind of gravelly, that dusty, you're talking about the Rutherford dust, it's really distinctive and they definitely feel that on there. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like I'm two in a piece of, piece of two by four. Right, it's very right. pleasant. And it gets better the longer it's been open too as it, yeah. as it gets to breathe a little bit. I would also say the 704 name came about from, they have an Australian cab that's um, 407, been 407. And this is basically two hemispheres, one story, but they were basically opposite hemispheres. So 407, 704 is the backward. I like it. The number the other way around. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so. Numerology is very important. Yes. All right. There's a reason behind it all. all right. It's a science. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so going into the next one, the bin 149. Yeah, so Again, the one, yeah. All Cabernet? Uh, it's all Cabernet. Um, it's, it was very interesting to me, this wine, because um, of the four wines, I think this is so approachable and almost a showstopper of the bunch because um, you can drink it now. You know, we'll go into the Quantum in, in a minute, and the Quantum is much more tighter woven and needs quite a few years to open up, where the 149 you can really um, enjoy now or you can lay it down for a number of years too. It came about by accident in some respects as far as how they made the blend for this wine. I think originally it was going to be 100% um, some of the best fruit from California some of the best soil type from California. And as they were in the labs working out the blends, um, Steph Dunn, Peter Gago, Andrew uh, Baldwin, all the winemakers together, um, they couldn't quite get the wine to express what they were looking for when they were making it. Yeah. Um, and they just for, just for kicks and giggles, um, they decided to throw in some Australian fruit. Um, so 14, 149 signifies the 14.9% that's in there from Australia. Um, and so um, it's Australian fruit mixed with Californian fruit, hence Wines of the World on the label. Okay. Um, super interesting, super cool story. Just I think you get much more of that. Um, the, the A1 fruit that they put in from Australia is like um, McGill Estate. Some of their best okay. um, fruit that they get in California um, goes into it. So it's just a, it's a showstopper for sure. It's definitely okay. one of my favorites. I love it. I totally get all the tannin on this. Yeah. And it's just, it's big. Yeah. I remember like, this is something that I want to drink like in a cellar. For sure. And just like, it's, it yeah. speaks to... Um, a stronger personality, it's a little bit more assertive than the others. Yeah. And they kind of enter it. And this is all French wood as well. Oh. Yeah, 20% yeah. new. Yep. I like it. Yeah. Right. I don't want to scare Sheila, but she's in her <laughs> office. We have a $700 bottle of wine here. I have a wine key. Do you think we should open it? <laughs> because the, the door's locked, right? 
<laughs> and, um, so we're getting thumbs up from the video crew, and let's see if Sheila is fast enough to like jump off and open it. I just got to do it. Like, here lies Cyan. She worked at Argonaut, and now she's gone. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, Quantum. So, $700 bottle of wine. We have one of these in the fine wine lockup. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned there might be more around? They are there is, actually. Um, yeah, we had an allocation initially when we first launched the wines into the marketplace into February. <clears throat> and we have um, a couple of extra bottles if there was a need for, for more. Um, okay. Just to put things in perspective, you know, the Quantum is along the lines of Grange as far as quality of fruit. Um, there's 13% Shiraz, 87% Cab. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, again, it's a very tightly woven wine that's going to take a long time to open up. Um, but it's it's an amazing um, bottle of wine, and um, yeah, there's, there's a couple more bottles available if you would have interest. Is this the them. very first release, it first is. vintage? Yeah. So if you're a collector, thank like, you should totally. probably have this. Right. And just also for for uh, you know just for uh, comparisons, um, the Grange, well, the first year of Grange was 1951, mm -hmm. and um, the bottle of 1951 sold in the auction block about two months ago for eighty one thousand. <laughs> So this is definitely a collector's <laughs> item that can be laid down for a long, long time and possibly make some money on it later or possibly enjoy it with your family when you, you know, when you, when the time is right. But it's definitely a special, special bowling. Have you tasted it? I have not tasted it. But yeah, everything yeah. I've heard is that it's just not ready to take. I mean, it's okay. like, it's so, it's so tightly woven. And I think that's why the 149 has more... Um, Available availability and mm -hmm. and um, true expression of what you can enjoy right now, whereas the yeah. quantum is just like it's a it's at the twenty thirty year yeah. play. The trophy. For sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm excited if I ever get the chance to drink it. So I have friends out there. Remember me. Um, <laughs> if so, I ever get a sample, I'll be calling you. Yeah, better. I expect it completely. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I hope you managed to understand everything that we said today with our <laughs> excited, happy act. Accents. Um, thank you for watching. Um, as always, we will have these wines available in the store. Special pricing for the rest of the week or so. There probably won't be a discount on this. So yeah. Australia and New Zealand's on sale right now, but I don't think it applies to this bottle. Um, and then if you enjoy the video, enjoy the content, we had a lot of fun last week with Susanna. Next week we're going to do some $100 rosé. It exists. It's pretty good. Um, and follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and YouTube, and then you'll get updates when all the videos are going live. And we'll have these wines available on the shelf, but then also a little display rack up by the registers, too. DJ, thank you so much. Thanks for having Great me. Fun. I don't want to go to work. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, yeah, cheers. cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs>